Uh, good morning. We start uh, session uh, 32. Uh, at this point, we um, really uh, start working on uh, actual quarter 4 items. Okay. And uh, we start with some surgery. Okay. And before uh, that actual surgery, um, let us um, just work out a few uh, terms among ourselves just for 10 days. Uh, those uh, who uh, knew these terms earlier, uh, they anyway know. And those uh, who uh, did not know earlier, um, after 10 days, they do not need to care. Mm, but uh, these 10 days, at some uh, occasions, uh, I might uh, say some of these things. So, let me make things clear. Uh, a subject and a single verb in the proper role of a verb uh, constitute uh, a clause. Okay. That is, there may be other things associated with them, but to define something called a clause, uh, you need a subject and a single verb okay, in the proper role of a verb. Uh, when I say proper role of a verb, what I mean is that third forms, fifth forms and two plus a verb, uh, these kinds of structures um, are not uh, counted as verb in this uh, sense. Okay. Now, uh, you earlier knew that a sentence also uh, must have a subject and must have a verb either actually spelled out or implied. Okay. So, that means a sentence uh, can have a single clause and such a sentence we will call as a simple sentence. Okay. And most of uh, the quarters 1, 2, 3 uh, was concerned with uh, simple sentence, okay? Simple sentences, except for occasional um, uh, departures. There may be sentences with uh, more than one clauses, and uh, if all the clauses are equally prominent, uh, then we call such a sentence as compound sentence. Okay? Uh, some of them uh, we have studied earlier. Remember this: Ram went to forest, and Lakshman followed. Two clauses connected by this connector. Ravi will paint the house or he will ask his brother to paint it. Okay. This he will may go missing in the compound sentence. Or we went together, but entered his office one at a time. What it means is that we went together, but we entered his office one at a time. Okay. So, and the third, fourth in this case, um, this so, is actually uh, not connected in the same sentence as the other uh, upper one, uh, previous one, but it could be so. It could be the other team went inside together, comma, so they crowded his office and his wife, he was angry. So, all these are examples of compound sentences, okay, where both clauses are equally prominent and they could have been independent sentences. Okay. There may be a sentence in which there is one main clause and other clauses operate uh, as something, operate in some roles, either subject or object that is something having the force of a noun uh, or um, as a qualifying uh, word, qualifying a noun or a pronoun that means operating as an adjective or it may be qualifying something else means a verb or adjective or adverb then it will be operating as an adverb. So, such sentences in which there is one main clause and other clauses operate as small items here and there, uh, they are that sentence that kind of a sentence is called a complex sentence. And there may be some sentences which are of a more involved structure that is at the top level it may show one structure, but when you go inside a clause that clause may show some more complicated structures inside. So, such things are also possible. Okay. So, let us take some examples uh, from a famous story, the resident patient. So, these are the sentences which uh, we will um, analyze. Okay. And this process of analyzing, analysis of sentences that is called parsing. In fact, when we were studying interpretation, uh, what we were effectively doing was parsing. 
okay. but we were trying to express the meaning of the sentence in the common local language. Now, even without that common local language translation thing, if we do the rest of the uh, uh, task that is the um, technical uh, that is technically known as parsing. Okay. So, these are the sentences which we will be taking as examples. Okay. So, take 5 minutes and try to study these sentences and try to figure out what kind of sentence each of them is. So, first one his characteristic talk with its keen observance of detail and subtle power of inference held me amused and enthralled. Okay. So, here his characteristic talk that is the subject of the sentence about which something is being said. So, this is the subject and what is the subject doing or what did the subject do? His characteristic talk held. Okay. So, held is the verb actually operating like the proper verb and held whom me that is object. Okay. Now, other things amused and enthralled how it held me? It held me amused and enthralled. So, these are two adverbs which are qualifying this verb held. Apart from that his characteristic talk subject what kind of talk? What kind of characteristic talk? So, the qualifier comes here with its keen observation of detail and subtle power of inference. Okay. I write with a pen, with a pen is a phrase, it does not have its own subject or its own verb. Okay. So, it is a phrase and with something something, with what? Its keen observation of detail and with subtle power of inference. So, these two things are connected with with. So, with these two things, so what kind of characteristic talk? talk with these things. Okay. So, this entire phrase is operating like an adjective to this word talk, another adjective to the same word talk is characteristic. Okay. So, what kind of a sentence is this? A subject, a verb, an object, two adverbs qualifying the verb and one extra adjective which is this huge thing phrase that is qualifying this. Okay. So, that means from here to here actually is the subject. Okay. Talk is the main subject word. Okay. So, you can take the sentence as talk held me, I ate a fruit, okay. subject verb object talk held me. What kind of talk? Characteristic talk, whose his. Again something more about the talk okay. with several details with several properties. What properties? This and that. Okay. So, this turns out to be a simple sentence. Okay. Fine. Take another. This was a tall young man, surprisingly handsome with a dark fierce face and the limbs and chest of a Hercules. Okay. Open it. This subject was verb was with was you cannot complete a sentence. So, you need something else after that. Okay. So, this was what? So, a tall young man. Okay. So, this is a compliment and now this man some more things about the man. So, man is a noun. So, more things are coming which are qualifying what kind of a man we are talking about surprisingly handsome. So, handsome qualifies man surprisingly qualifies handsome. Okay. So, the main sentence is this was a man okay. and man tall young man what kind surprisingly handsome something more in the description of that man is this phrase with a few things. What are those things? A face the limb and the limbs and chest okay. the limbs and, and chest of a Hercules this of, of a Hercules itself is for that matter a phrase. Okay. And with a dark fierce face and this, okay. this whole thing qualifies this man which restricts the idea of the man. What kind of man? This man. Okay. 
So, this is also a simple sentence subject verb single ok only one clause one subject one verb and then other details. No? This kind of exercise will help you in breaking down a long complicated sentence and understanding its meaning appropriately. Fine. I made notes of my patient's pulse and temperature, tested the rigidity of his muscles and examined his reflexes. I is the common subject with these three clauses. I made notes something something, I tested the rigidity of something something, I examined his reflexes. So, there are three clauses okay? and all three clauses are equally prominent. None of the clauses is dependent on the other in the sense of an adjective or adverb or object or the subject or something like that. Each of the clauses is equally uh, prominent compared to others. Okay? So, I did three things made notes, tested the rigidity, examined his reflexes. So, verb, object, verb, object and so on. Notes, qualifier to this notes, notes of what? This qualifier, qualifying the notes. Similarly, rigidity, rigidity of what? Not bones of his muscles. Okay? So, that is qualifying this. So, these are phrases and in a way they are qualifying this. Okay? These are not clauses, make note. This does not have, these does not, do not have their own subjects or verbs. Okay? These are phrases which we have studied earlier. Okay? We continue. The hall door had been closed, but not shut. Okay? Now, here several parts can be interpreted in several ways. The hall door had been, had been what? Closed, but not shut. Okay. Closed is an adjective, you know, third form. Shut is also an adjective, not shut. Okay. And these two adjectives are connected through this connector, but. So, these are qualifying this. Okay. Uh, in this case, they are with been, so not operating as adjectives, but you can say adverbs. Or alternatively, you can say that had been closed is our verb. Okay. So, we have seen that have plus been plus third form that is the past perfect okay, perfect tense construction. So, in this case had okay, because past perfect. The hall door had been closed, but the hall door had not been shut. Okay. So, this is a subject, this is a verb and that is it. This is one clause and this is another clause. So, in this interpretation this turns out to be a compound sentence both the uh, clauses are equally prominent okay? and they are in opposition to each other because they are connected through the connector, but. Okay? Next example, oh. then your eyes ceased to pucker, but you continued to look across and your face was thoughtful. So, here in this, this then is actually exterior item. This then is set establishing a connection of meaning with the previous sentence. This sentence proper starts from your eyes. Your eyes ceased to pucker. This could have been an independent sentence. That is one clause. Okay? Your eyes is a subject, ceased verb and this is object. Ceased what? Ceased to pucker. Okay. But, after this connector, the second clause. Second clause is also equally prominent as the first and in that inside that second clause, there are two further clauses. Okay. You continued to look across, you continued what? To look across and your face was thoughtful. Okay. So, this is also a compound sentence of two clauses. The second clause itself is composed of two clauses. Okay? So, all three of them are equally prominent, nobody is dependent on anybody else. Okay? Continue. I may say with confidence that he never had occasion to regret his speculation. What is the main sentence? I may say. Okay? Subject, verb. Okay? 
how, how I may say, with confidence. So, this adverb is qualifying this. Okay. I may say what object, now you see, as object this entire thing is coming, that is the connector, leave that out. The remaining part itself could have been a sentence, he never had occasion to regret his speculation, this could have been a sentence. But in this particular sentence, it is doing a subsidiary role, it is performing a subsidiary role, a helping role. Okay. So, it is a subordinate clause and operating as what? Actually, this whole thing that he never had occasion to regret his speculation, that whole thing is sitting as the object. I may say this statement. Okay. So, this statement is the object that he never had occasion to regret his speculation. So, subject verb, actually this never could be uh, you know interpreted as the adverb to had, okay. but together also uh, putting it as verb makes uh, sense. What he never had occasion, what kind of occasion to regret his speculation. Okay. So, this is an example of a complex sentence in which an entire clause is operating as an object, okay, noun. Okay. In the example which you read to me, the reasoner drew his conclusions from the actions of the man whom he observed. Okay. First, throw away the um, uh, parts which are not the actual thing. The actual thing in the example which you read to me, the reasoner, the reasoner, okay, who did anything, the reasoner drew conclusions. Okay. So, the reasoner is the subject. What did the subject do? Drew, drew what? His conclusions. So, the subject, the reasoner drew his conclusions, subject did object. Okay. So, this is the actual skeleton of the sentence. Now, um, where did he draw it? In the example. Okay. Which example? Example which you read to me. Now, this which you read to me, this you read to me could, have, could be a sentence. Okay. Now, which you read to me, this thing is particularly pointing out which example, okay. restricting okay. or qualifying example. So, this is a phrase even inside the phrase, you have a full clause sitting. A full clause, which could supply a full sentence, you read to me, is here standing subservient to just a word inside a phrase, which itself is not a sentence. Okay. So, in the example, which example? Which you read to me, the reasoner drew, what, he did, what did he draw? His conclusions. Now, this phrase is qualifying these conclusions. All conclusions of his life or what kind of conclusions? From the actions, conclusions from the actions, okay. which conclusions? Particular conclusions from the actions, this whole thing is the phrase in which from the actions in that actions is being qualified by this phrase, which is of the man, something, something. Man is being qualified with whom he observed. Okay. So, this qualifies this man, of the man this whole thing qualifies which actions, from the actions of such and such kind this whole thing qualifies the conclusions, which conclusions and conclusions is actually the object of this sentence. Okay. So, this has one main clause, the reasoner drew his conclusions from the actions etcetera is coming as a phrase to this, from the actions of the man. This whom he observed is another clause, which is qualifying man. This adverb phrase, which qualifies drew, in that the word example is being qualified by this adjective clause. Okay. So, these are two dependent clauses, okay, subordinate clauses. This clause is qualifying example, this clause is qualifying this okay, and others are phrases of course. Okay. So, this is a complex sen uh, sentence with 
two one main verb and two one main um, clause and two subordinate clauses. Okay. Slowly our examples are becoming bigger. So when I saw you throw down your paper and enter upon a train of thought, till now nothing has started. Subject has not come into picture. Subject is going to come into picture now. I was very happy. This is the main part of the sentence. To have the opportunity of reading it off and eventually of breaking into it as a proof that I had been in rapport with you. This is troublesome sentence. Many of our um, students across the net will have difficulty with it. So, let us break it. So, this is a connector connecting this particular sentence through meaning with the previous sentence. Okay. So, at this time when something happened, I was very happy and what was that time? When I saw you this thing okay. and how did I see you? Throwing and entering, throwing down your paper and entering upon a train of thought. Okay. Upon a train of thought hap happens to be a phrase. Okay. So, I saw you in these two things, okay. these two ways. So, when this happened, so this is a phrase, uh, this is a clause operating as adverb to was. Okay. This is adverb of time, when, answering the question when. Okay. And that is very clear because it even starts with when. Okay. So, I at that time when this thing, these things happened, I was very happy. Why? To have the opportunity of doing several things, okay. of reading it off and of breaking into it. Eventually is an adverb qualifying this and both of these of reading it off and of breaking into it, these two things are qualifying the opportunity. So, opportunity, what kind of opportunity? Opportunity of what? Of reading it off, of breaking into it. Okay. So, these two things qualify opportunity and have, have what? The opportunity, how? as a proof, have means have in what um, in, uh, you know have in what uh, sense okay. as a proof, as a proof qualifying the proof is this clause that I had been in rapport with you. So, this phrase is actually qualifying this okay. and this entire thing that I had been in rapport with you is qualifying the word proof and incidentally this whole thing is a phrase having inside it embed embedded many other things. Okay. The small matter which I have chronicled under the heading of a study in scarlet and that other later one connected with the loss of the Gloria Scott may serve as examples of this skyline charybdis which are forever threatening the historian. Okay. So, what is the main sentence? Let us try to see that the small matter may serve as examples. May, the small matter which I have chronicled under this and that other later one, the small matter and that other later one may serve as examples. This is the actual sentence. Okay. So, the small matter and that other later one may serve as examples. This is the sentence. Okay. Which small matter? Qualifier comes here, which I have chronicled where under the heading of a study in scarlet. Okay. So, this adjective is qualifying the matter, okay. the small matter, which small matter? This one okay. and that other later one, which one? Connected. Connected how? With what? With the loss of the Gloria Scott. Gloria Scott was a ship. Okay. So, the small matter and that other later one qualifying the matter with this, so that the listener knows which matter we are talking about or he is talking about and that later one here also the listener should know which later one is being talked about. So, says connected with this thing, essential thing is this and this may serve as examples, examples of what kind of this skyline and charity. Skyline and is taken as in the sense of 
the horns of a dilemma in which uh, both options look equally bad. Okay. So, examples qualified by of this Skylar and Charybdis and also qualified by this, which are forever threatening the historian. In this case, an alternative explanation, alternative interpretation also could have been taken by interpreting this which as and these. In that case, this would not be a complex sentence, in that case it would be a compound sentence. Then the actual sentence would read as the small matter and that other later one may serve as examples of this thing and these are forever threatening the historian. So, that is one independent clause that is this is another independent clause, this could have been another interpretation. But right now in this picture we have been taking the interpretation that this is qualifying this. Okay. So, in the qualifying or restrictive sense this is an adjective clause adjective to this example. On the other hand if we interpret this which in the sense of and these that is the continuative sense in which there is no restriction on example by this, this we are telling a few other things. Okay. So, in that case it would be a compound sentence with this as an independent clause. Okay. So, such examples you find quite often in uh, books that you read, you need not make such boxed uh, things in every case, but mentally you need to work out the these connections. And whatever you do, if you get the meaning of sentences when you read, this connection and this interlinking you must be doing anyway. Okay. So, in today's assignment, um, we will ask you to um, uh, read a fresh story from the internet okay, and uh, collect a total of 100 sentences from that. Of course, if you read a story that will have more than 100 sentences okay, and from that out of your choice collect 100 sentences. Uh, four uh, sorry uh, in four groups 25 simple sentences 25 compound sentences 25 complex sentences and rest 25 of mixed up nature which cannot be classified in any of these and this exercise we are asking you today um, to do um, because uh, after these uh, these um, sets of 25 sentences uh, will have a purpose in the coming days Okay. So, when you collect these sentences uh, try to ensure that uh, you do not collect uh, very small trivial sentences uh, analyzing which uh, you get no fun. Okay. So, you collect some nice sentences having uh, 10 15 uh, words at least and uh, uh, to keep uh, things safe uh, try to collect sentences which are not longer than 30, 30 words because that may pose unnecessary uh, trouble. Okay. So, when you submit the assignment to us, uh, you will of course, as usual you will uh, tell us the you will write at the top the title, the author's name and the URL from where you have read that story. So, that if we want we can read that same story okay. and then uh, you will report these sentences. So, far as reporting the sentences is concerned there is nothing, you will select the sentences and copy that sentence from there and paste it in your thing. Okay. So, cut paste we do not like but in this context it does not make uh, uh, much of a difference. Okay. Fine. So, so far regarding syntax today, uh, let us uh, talk a little uh, about uh, uh, words. Okay. Um, I am writing a word here and I will ask you people to tell me um, words which are somehow etymologically relate related to that. Okay. So, act, okay. act is what adjective, noun, adverb, verb, what? Verb. Noun and verb both. Okay. So, maybe we write it okay. and maybe I start. Okay. So, active, anybody can see that there is a connection between act and active. Okay. Uh, action. Enact. 
action would somebody said react actor actor good okay before we uh, forget uh, active is what adjective action noun actor enact react okay what is activity fine deactivate oh before that we start with activate okay activity activate deactivate and so on okay we will we can go on okay uh, how many you expect how many you expect durga 30 good uh, how many you expect oh only kartik oh good high expectation arinam 50 uh, <laughs> okay so maybe um, somebody can spend some time and count how many are there okay so it is more than 30 right now here and of course i am assuring you there are more this is more than 30 38 to 40 38 yeah it to 40. is roughly 37 the person who made it says 37 okay so uh, but i can tell you that uh, if we hunt well we will find more but we did not uh, feel the necessity of uh, uh, hunting so badly okay so like this you can see the entire connection of so many words together and you know studying analyzing these connections is a great help in learning words and when you read a book you come across um, uh, a word uh, counteractive okay before that perhaps you did not hear that word okay so first time when you find the word counteraction or counteractive in a um, uh, story it is counter counter opposite okay not bad action act action so action you know okay counter action you know the meaning counteractive immediately you know the meaning okay so then at the same time you say okay so counteract meaning also i understand okay so like this many things you can understand even without looking up the dictionary okay so you need to develop a habit of seeing a word and mentally thinking of its connection with other words. So, connection from the root, so there may be some suitable connection through the meaning also. And with those meanings, with those connections, quite often we understand the word roughly and we understand the context to a good extent. Okay? So, of course, when we write it like this, if we ask you to do a similar exercise, um, we will not insist on you that you make this kind of a structure and this kind of diagram and so on and because um, everybody will not uh, feel like doing this okay so in those exercises even if you even if you submit a, a list of words in this manner we will be equally happy okay so i do if you say that i do not have time to nurture the entire tree and I do not have the space to keep the tree, I do not have a garden like you. So, fine, you take the root and the branches and the fruits of the tree and keep it in a tub, we do not mind that. Okay? So, that is this is this tub. Okay? So, like this you go on putting things, okay. but we want you to write or make note of the part of speech against every word. Okay? And then only when it appears in a context you get the meaning correctly and then only you can use those words appropriately okay so connection through meaning and the part of speech you should be identifying properly for example this word is both noun and adjective and the root word itself is both verb and noun okay so in the case of multiple identity you should recognize that also in many cases it um, is not so easy to identify the multiple identities. Okay? So, this is what um, 
we start our module 4 with and like this many other things we will have on the way. Thank you.